like I said, I mean, Taz was in charge of merchandising. Tommy was in charge of, he did a lot of booking and, and you know, behind the scenes stuff. Bubba booked the shows. Uh, he would call up the different cities and, you know, interest them in an ECW show. And it just spread f through from all that, you know. And I wasn't there long enough to ever get a secondary job. I was living in Canada at the time. But like I said, it was all part of the close-knitness of what we were doing. My job was to get the crazy plane tickets and plane fares that Paulie would arrange for me, um, oftentimes calling me half an hour before I had to leave my house for the flight. I remember one time uh, I got home at about 11.30 at, at night and I was supposed to leave the next morning. And there's very few flights from Calgary to get into Philly in time. And I called him every hour, 11.30, no answer, 12.30, no answer, 1.30, left a message, 2.30, 3.30, 4.30. Finally, at 5.30 in the morning, I called him. I said, you know, you can take your TV title and you can stick it up your ass. I don't care what you do. I'm not coming in. You can forget your stupid promotion. See you later, buddy. Forget it. I'm, I'm not coming, no matter what. A minute later, he called me back. He's like, hey, what's going on? I, I tried to call you and your phone wasn't working and I just couldn't get a hold of you. And here's your flight information. And what's going on, buddy? And blah, 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 blah. And by the time you finish talking to him, it's impossible to not like this guy. And like I said, like I called him and said, I'm never working for you again. And 10 minutes later, I was packing my bags with minutes to spare to make it to the airport because he left everything to the last minute. That's just how he liked to do it. And he probably cost himself a lot of money in, 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 the, in the meantime. But another time I got my uh, ticket and I was going with a, a Calgary wrestler called Johnny Smith. And uh, Paulie, uh, actually, I got my ticket and I called to... Um, I think make a change maybe or try and get like a window seat or something and the airline said well you got your window seat and we're very sorry about your brother-in-law excuse me we're very sorry about your brother-in-law that you know your brother-in-law passed away we're sorry about that I'm like my brother-in-law what are you talking about and they're like well you, your bereavement fair that you have you know we're sorry about your brother-in-law you know Chris Benoit passed away and I was like oh my brother-in-law Chris oh I'm sorry I'm so distraught over this whole thing I apologize this jackass waited so long he bought a bereavement fee which is a plane fare that you buy when somebody passes away you get a half price ticket and he bought that uh, that that for me and then um <laughs> so me and johnny smith are trying to figure out how we'd be related how our brother-in-laws died and if we're the family going it's like how if your brother-in-law died and it's the same brother-in-law are we related or are we brothers or are his sisters like i don't know so and then I got into the arena and I told Paul, I said, listen, man, if you're going to book me on this kind of fare, you got to tell me so I know. And he said, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. Pulls out this big pad of hospital paper from a hospital and writes down, you know, thank you for allowing this fare to go, you know, blah, 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 Paul Heyman, MD or something. Like, he was the doctor. Because if you get a doctor's note, sometimes the airline wants to see a doctor's note to go for the bereavement fare. So I had my Paul E. signed doctor's note just in case. I don't even know if you can tell that story, but that's kind of was my job to put up with all the bullshit to get there and then you show up for the match and it would be the best time ever and it was all worthwhile. That's a great story. Yeah. Benoit told the same story too about his stuff. Well the best thing was, you know, it was my brother-in-law, Chris Benoit, was the inside rib. It's like, ha ha ha. So we all went through. I remember Ron Simmons one time got a ticket for like uh, Seymour Goldstein or something like that. And he's like, do I look like I'm Jewish to you, man? Come on, give me something to work with here. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> See, the, the thing is, was on the, on the independent scene, which we all were at the time, if another promoter tried to pull that crap, you'd say, forget it, I'm not going, I don't need the hassle. But with Paul E., it was just part of the deal, and it, you gave you the right to go work in ECW. That's how important it was to be there. That's how addictive and how much fun. Pure word, if I could think, what's, name one word at ECW, word association. ECW, fun. End of story.